Hello, here's Susan Sandanamaker with uh, SunnisTheFuture.net. We are very fortunate to be able to grab hold of uh, Mr. Chris Selwood, who is behind the scene, who's been responsible for all this wonderful activities and events of the uh, Viola World Solar Challenge of 2011. Mr. Selwood, I am very glad that you're able to, we're able to get hold of you now. So, want to say a few things for us? Well, it's very nice of you to be here, and it's very nice to have the interest and have you trying to spread the message that we need to take much more care of our planet. Certainly in the context of what we're doing here, we've got the bright young kids of the world pursuing the ultimate efficiency in electric cars and uh, making sure that our children will have, hopefully have the same mobility options that we had in our day, but with a much lighter footprint on the planet. Yes, and with a lot of ingen ingenious, uh, uh, innovative ideas, and that's what you are able to generate for all of us on this planet Earth with the activities such as the uh, World Solar Challenge, and we are much more likely to be able to accomplish that. But tell us, um, how did you get started with the World Solar Challenge? I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. So. Uh, I've worked uh, most of my working life. Uh, I've been a um, uh, worked in, in film and television and events and conferences, travelling around the world. And I've been lucky enough to uh, uh, lucky, lucky enough to travel to some quite remote places in the world and see firsthand how the planet is degradating in, in certain places. And I was trying to work out in my life how I could make a difference to this. And at that point in time my wife and I decided we'd come back and live in sunny South Australia, get out of London, get out of the rat race, get out of the big corporate stuff. And they just built a new convention centre here in Adelaide. And uh, I didn't want to work too hard, but I didn't want to give up work altogether. And you uh, want to have fun wanted, too. I know, and have fun. I still wanted to make a contribution. And I found myself as one of the technical managers in the convention centre, the new convention centre. Um, when the World Solar Challenge Awards ceremony came in and Hans Thalstrup came in and he set up all his awards on the stage and he went off to have tea and then the sponsor came in and set up all their sponsor stuff on the stage, moved the awards out of the way, set up the sponsor stuff and they went out. Then the band came in, moved everything again and set up and Thalstrup came back and he went ballistic, as you would, as you would. But knowing what was, uh, was, was going on and having technical control of the venue on the weekend the bosses weren't there. I just called up the guys downstairs and had another stage put in on the other side of the room because that's in the round, or it was in the round in those days. And Tolstrup came back and said, oh, what's going on? I said, well, you know, your guys came and set up your stuff and these guys set up their stuff and then the band came and moved everything and I figured that there needs to be room for everybody and we, we, we'll all work together. So there's the stuff for the sponsor of the band and you can set up your awards over here. And he said, oh, great, thank you very much. So we, had lots of chats and then the solar car guys came in and their enthusiasm and passion was absolutely infectious. As we can see right now. As you can see right now. And I said to Tholstrup, hey, anything you need, let me be part of this. And he said, oh, great, look, you want to be a volunteer, come and work with us. And, and that's what we did. And uh, then uh, as the, a couple of years rolled by, I found myself running it. And I've been doing that ever since. And I still keep touch with Hans. He's in China at the moment, otherwise he'd be here. And uh, uh, he's, he's a great inspiration. He spends a lot of time traveling, a lot of time speaking and lecturing about environmental issues, as indeed I do myself now. But uh, we all need to keep pushing this message. Yes. And you know, there's a very interesting message. One of the guys here with the, um, uh, with the uh, Nuon team, uh, Vubo Ockels, he's an astronaut. He's one of the few people who've actually been out off this planet and looked back and looked back at the planet, at the fragileness of the atmosphere in the vastness of space. And he likens it, he's a sailor, and he said, it's the same as I go out in the ocean in my yacht. Why would I drill holes in the hull of my yacht when I'm out in the ocean? It's the same, the way that we are... Uh, treating our planet and treating the precious resources of the planet, he likens exactly to the way that uh, uh, you would be on a yacht but, but destroying what's sustaining you. Right. It's a very interesting metaphor. Yeah, so I was really glad to find that he, uh, he stopped drilling the Barrier Reef and instead uh, looking from a different perspective, uh, using it as a source for tourism. Of and course. that is just brilliant. And, and 
it also helps to preserve our planet. And what about some of the most memorable stories from all these years of uh, operating or uh, you know, conducting the World Solar Challenge? Oh, look, there's, there's lots of memorable stories. It's a question on notice. Bringing the best ones to mind, I don't know. One of the richest guys in Australia uh, has a cattle station and his private plane takes him out there. It's where he goes to relax away from all the pressures of his big corporate life. And one of the girls' schools uh, years ago uh, had camped on the highway quite near and he sent, to his, sent his servants to go and find out what these lights were on the highway. And when he found out what was going on, he invited them all in for a party. And they were all in his pool and having a great time. And that was an inspiration. And I think he ended up, they ended up getting some dollars out of him to, to, to fund their car. Um, that reminds me of another occasion where talking about bright young people looking for innovative, innovative ways of achieving their goals. Um, uh, another school, uh, they wanted to encapsulate their own solar cells. So uh, to do that, you, you make your, your chemical mix, but you need something very smooth and, and, and quite cold. And uh, I went to visit them just by chance on this weekend. And they'd taken the glass doors off the library, the school library, and put them on the bench in the lab on bags of ice. Okay. And they were using these glass doors from the library <laughs> as the basis for the encapsulation of their solar cells. And Monday morning, the library doors were back there and nobody noticed. But it's, okay. it's about using the resources we've got carefully to achieve the ends we need to achieve and and that can be achieved in, in thousands of different ways where would you recommend it? let's say if uh, i actually talked to uh, a father who was interested in getting his 13 year old son to start building a solar car um he's actually in, from sydney australia now what would you recommend for them in terms of uh let's say sponsorship or uh, as a matter of fact, they're thinking about starting a museum for solar energy. And what would you recommend in terms of getting sponsorship or uh, let's say if they want to have a go at the World Solar Challenge in two years, what would you say? Follow your dream and never give up. That's, that's the, the, the easy way, but uh, uh, the underlying philosophy rather. Follow your dream and never give up. But to really get into it, I think that it's, it's very difficult for an individual to do that from scratch. Uh, there are a number of solar car teams around who are unaligned. Um, and uh, get in with those guys, see what they've got to offer, share that inspiration, share that knowledge, take learnings from it, and then uh, work together to have an extension of that. So for example, the Aurora Solar Car, solar car Team in Melbourne, uh, they're a group of volunteers and uh, they're always looking for new people to work with them and they're always ready to uh, assist with extension out to different institutions different schools different groups of people and uh, if there's the uh, if there's the will and the dream and the uh, effort put in then they can create something in a different part of the country and then perhaps move on again from there you can see it's definitely collaborative effort there it requires lots of hours and uh, lots of energy and everyone that I will definitely make sure that they know, know this. And, and that's absolutely right. It is a collaborative effort. And it's, um, uh, you look at the various teams and the way they approach this. Some say, we've got the best technology. Some say, we've got the most money. Neither of those is the whole story. Neither of those will necessarily achieve their goals. <laughs> because it's about the... Uh, the intellectual processes that they bring to it, the way they manage that money, the way they manage uh, those technical resources, that will bring them glory in the end. Being the best that you can in everything you can do is something that we can all take into our daily lives. And if we do that with the notion that the best we can do is the lightest, has the lightest impact on the planet, we can all make a difference in very little ways. And in the process, I see that you're also generating a lot of interest with uh, children in school and uh, from the RIAs. And um, they've just done a variety of things that hold children's interest for math and sciences, which is what we like to see more of on this planet. Well, absolutely. And I think uh, after this interview, uh, we'll introduce you to the guys from the Royal Institution in Australia, the scientific body. We've got uh, Dr. Zoz Brooks from the Discovery Channel here this morning. He's working with kids. They're going to play with electric motors. They're going to play with electricity and magnetism. You know, so much of what we do in our country 
and maybe so much of what we do in Western culture is about sporting athletic prowess and we don't I believe put enough effort into encouraging young people to um, excel in intellectual prowess to be more deeply thinking to be clever at what they do uh, the whole Olympic thing is faster bigger stronger but where does that lead us it doesn't it doesn't build the wealth of knowledge of mankind in the same way as these bright young people trying to push the boundaries of the projects that they have, trying to find new and different ways of doing things, uh, attacking the old paradigms. There has to be a better way of doing it. I'm an old dinosaur now, but if I can encourage young people to, uh, to, to, to uh, do brighter things, we've got some beautiful electric cars over here, uh, we can reduce our impact, we, we don't need to lose our mobility, uh, but we just have to be smarter about it. Yes, with your help, I think there is a much better chance that planet Earth is going to have a, a bright, sunny future. Thank you very well, much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate these few minutes. Pleasure. Right. Thank you. And signing off, Susan Sun Nonemaker at sunisthefuture.net. We are here with Mr. Chris Selwood. And he's the person who's been totally responsible for all that you've been seeing in the last couple of days here. Thank you very much.